Right, well, grift them around everybody. Time to get cracking on another one. Uh, I hope everybody managed to get the sprays and that done last week after we have done, done the video on the cabbages. Uh, Jack onions, got them out the road, they're finished. Now well in, they've had a really good watering over the weekend. Good rainfall here in the northeastern coast. We're focused for more this afternoon. So I thought I'd pop downstairs and uh, crack on with some of the, um, the potting on. Now I had a, a couple of queries on the Facebook page the other night asking about my potting mixes. Um, do I always use shop sand in the mix as well? Yes, I do. Every mix I make, I always add an extra portion of shop sand. Uh, reason being, I always like my plants to have free drainage. That way, you get, they can never be over watered. There's always times when they're on benches and that it could good heavy rainfall, and uh, the plants get soggy, especially if they're not covered. And if they haven't got free drainage, well, they're just going to sit there in that cold, wet compost, and that's the first. Um, signs of diseases. So yep, um, to that question I always have extra sand. Perlite, I've always got perlite handy, especially when I'm doing seedling mixes. Uh, I like to uh, put my multi-purpose compost and my sharp sand in first, give it a good soaking, and then I put a handful of that to one side, add a handful of perlite, leave some free drain and just a nice light covering, and it just helps the seedlings emerge a lot easier. Uh, there's a tree full of them, which I'm uh, intending to do this afternoon. That's the, uh, that's the Bellis Daisy. I've been trying to get these done for a fortnight now, but um, as I said in the last video, I've been really busy up the plot, trying to get as much done as I can. Um, as I say, we're in the, we're in, the um, in the stages of getting the cabbages all planted out. I've still got the outside ones to plant this week. I'm going to do another video on that day towards the end of the week. Um, I've got the, um, the raspberry beds to sort out. That's another big job. Uh, we're still busy trying to finish off building the shed. Uh, we've got beds that turn over and uh, manure. It's, um, it's all good at the moment. And of course, I'm, I'm trying to catch up with my um, seedlings. Um, I put the uh, forget me nots in just a fortnight ago. They're well through. Pansies are through. Delphiniums are through. Um, Calandra. Now, I always like to have a few early Calandra off for next year. Calandula, they're already through. Well, they are sitting there for a couple of weeks yet. No hurry for them whatsoever. I'll pot them up, and of course, all of these plants are going to the cold greenhouse. In this case, they're going to the bottom polytunnel, up the allotment, they'll go up on the top bench. And while well, I'm on about the subject of autumn sown their plants, what you've got to realise is you're losing the light. Um, it's getting dark each day, we're losing the daylight. So it's imperative when you put your seedlings in, you get your plants in, you get them up as near as the light as you can. And that's why I put the benches in the in the tunnel, lifted them up to the top, so at least they're up near the light. The last thing you want is when it's cold, damp, is to have them struggling for light also. So nice free draining soil so they don't get over wet. Up on the top shelf where near as you can to the light, so you get plenty of light and they'll grow away nice and strong over the winter. Just nice and cold. No no heat whatsoever and they'll just uh, they'll run away. But uh, as I say, that's me mix anyway, that's me, me pot and mix. Uh, I normally add a little bit of my own compost to this, to these uh, mixtures, but um, with this being down at home, I haven't brought any down with us, so all I'm using is a multi purpose compost and sharp sand, good sharp sand. <coughs> and that's, that's me mixture for these. These are not stuck in there, in these multi purpose uh, seal trays for them. I'll probably put these off again. <coughs> I'll probably put these off again the end of November, early December, in the rare uh, six or seven centimetre pots. Um, most of these plants are for myself and therefore uh, family and friends, so I don't mind giving them the extra extra room in the um, in the bigger pots. And of course, they get a nice, stronger plant grown. But uh, that's that done anyway. Got nice, nice seed trees to work from, so I'm uh, most happy with that. And of course, uh, with the bellas, um, as I explained, I always sow them in three rows. That way, yeah, you can get in between. They've got plenty of light to stretch up and to grow on. And then once again, they compost, free drain, so you get a first class plant. And that's what they are, they're just they're perfect now, just for, for pulling out. 
And as you can see, caught them nice little clumps here. I'll just pop them on the top of the bed. And I can pick through them with picker. Such a satisfying job to do. Sometimes I do them in twos and threes. But if you want a nice strong plant, there's a couple there. I'll put them in there as a couple. If you want these strong plants, then you get in this, always get in this first class start. As I say, you work your way down the row, and uh, once again, a couple of small ones there. I don't mind if they're in twos and threes, because they're uh, Bella's Daisy are absolutely fantastic. Uh, they're a perennial. A lot of people just use them as an annual law. Uh, put them in, dig them out the following year. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong in leaving them. They look a bit chatty uh, and untidy in the summertime, but if you just keep cutting the leaves back and cleaning them out, the ones I planted last year out in the garden there, they're just starting to come back again there now. They're putting fresh growth on. Um, so there'll be a nice uh, there'll be a nice plant again for next year. They'll grow a lot bigger. And once again, as I say, there's a nice lovely little bunch here, and you can just place them on the bed. These are a little bit dry, by the way. Um, reason being is when I do come to pot them off, uh, they come up with tree much easier. As if they're soaking or wet, um, they tend to cling together. So I like to leave them a little bit on the dry side. I water them about two or three days before I'm due to uh, start potting them off. Let them dry out a little bit, and then you'll find them much easier, especially when you, you come to separate them. With the, the compost being dry, then you just work your way through them. It's a easy job. I love the, uh, I love potting off. Well, I love most of the, uh, most parts of the garden anyway. It's uh, when you come out and doing the nitty gritty, turning over the beds and that, and I leave all that to Roger. Um, he loves being out there with a the, spade and shovel and just digging away. Uh, he's getting all the beds prepared the last couple of days and of course all, all I've got to do now is to go up there and fill the beds back up. Now what I did start on the at the weekend is I managed to get the rhubarb bed cleared off or most of it. Um, it's a nice big trench so what I'm hopefully going to do with that is to put a couple of uh, planks or slippers across it and use it to so store some wet timber uh, just for over the over the next couple of months while we're, while we're sorting the garden out. Um, at the moment with building the shed we find we've got um, timber line all over the garden uh, so I'm, uh, I'm hoping to utilise the rhubarb bed and to store on some of the timber just until we get ourselves turned around and get the shed built. I hope tomorrow morning, more afternoon to get up and put the last of the framework up and uh, once that's done and the roof's on we can get it canvas to put a, a good um, a good top pole over and, uh, and then it means all I've got to do is work inside in the winter and that's 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 a job I like it's um, it's working under cover out of the weather I'm just working my way down here nice and nice and slow never in a hurry to to put these off I've got one left to do there now that one row I'm getting a full tray well, there's, there's three rows in there, so I've only filled two trays. Don't let it be soft with them. If you put them on properly, getting the roots well in, give them a good, give them a good uh, couple of wax, and there we are, as a first class tray full of Bellis Daisy. Now, we'll be making a couple more um, markers up. But as I say, I always like to, to keep them in one handy, and you can just stick that in. I'll go and sit in a polytunnel now, along with that brothers, two or three, I'll probably about three tree of these. I'll get these done this afternoon, get them finished off, and of course, a good soaking. And now they're in trays, so all I have to do is lift the uh, container up and flood that with water, and just let them, with it being a good sandy mixture, let them take their own water up. Perfect. No water over height. Over height. Uh, as you see, with the nice getting cool now, the last thing you want is your plant having cold leaves, turning cold in the evening, and of course that's when you attract your biteress and uh, your other diseases.
They do not want to be cold, so that's why I always take try and water from down below. Plenty of water in the tree and let them soak it up. If there's too much water in the tree, I'll take the tree back out, let a little bit of water out. But uh, you'll show up, see when they've got enough water, because the, the top of the surface will start going down, start going uh, dark brown. You know, the water's uh, seeping up, your plants have got enough water, so you can, you can tip any excess out. Easy job. Yeah, once these are up the garden, you'll be on big black trees. Uh, as I've got here. And what I'll do with the black trees, I'll line up with um, a good thick layer of newspapers and they'll just act like a sponge. All them trees will come out of here, they'll sit on top of the newspaper. These um, multi trees will sit on the newspaper. And then all I have to do is go along and walk the newspaper. And once again, they'll just soak all the water up in their own time. But they'll be sitting up on the top bench in the bottom polytunnel. But as I say, I'll post, um, I'll post in next week's video if they how we'll get on with this. So that's the bellas out the road. That's, uh, as you see, I've been trying to get into them for quite a while now. I'll finish these two off um, while I'm chatting. But uh, what I want to do is to get up and get started on the dahlias. Now, I lifted the dahlias last week. And uh, what I did, I kept four good chewers. I'm not going to grow a lot next year. I had too many in the garden this year. Um, and with it's not shown, I just kept me four favourites. So all I've done is I've, I've kept four daily chewers, I've dug them up, and they've been sitting in the in the melon house for about a week now. So maybe this afternoon, if the weather holds, we'll get up there. And what I'll do is I'll clean the chewers down, and I'll show you how I clean the chewers up. Excuse me, and pack my way ready for winter. Now the croissants, that's another thing. I've really poor um, show of croissants this year, it, mainly because I didn't have any time at all to look after them. Once they got in their buckets and they were put in the garden, they were just left. They weren't watered, they weren't fed, they weren't sprayed. They had a little bit of garlic spray at the beginning of the year and that was it. They were just left to get on with it. And of course, we did get a few nice flowers of them, not as many, but it's because they didn't have any time to spend on them whatsoever this year. So next year, um, I'm going to take the croissants out, um, cut them back and I'll show you how I deal with the stools. Ready for putting on the heat next year for, for taking cuttings. So it's a dahlias, it's a croissants, and of course, my all-time favourite, the sweet peas. Now, I think it's going to be next week before I start sowing the sweet pea, but we'll see, we'll see how the weather holds. And uh, what I might do, I might add it to the end of this video. Quite easy job to do. If you're sowing autumn sweet peas, you don't want to be in too much of a hurry. Even today, the sun's just getting out there now. It's focused for rain up here this afternoon. It's a uh, quarter to in the afternoon, and it's 70 in here in the cold greenhouse. So it just goes to show you, you just need that little bit of sunshine, and it's the same on any of your plots. Polytunnels, you just need that little bit of sunshine on, and you'd be surprised how much it lifts up the temperature inside. So, you know, so don't be, be too worried about um, mollycoddling your plants. If you're going to put autumn sweet peas in, make sure that they're as cold as possible. Mine again, I'll be going to bottom polytunnel, where I've got, I've got doors on, but there's mesh on them. There's wind blowing through there all the time, nice and cool, nice fresh air. And that's where my sweet peas will be planted. They'll go into pine pots, three or four seed per pot, a good, strong, multi-purpose and homemade compost mixture with sharp sand, um, the same as what the strawberries are, and we'll, we'll put the sweet peas on. So it's all about flowers again, This um, trying to get all these sorted out. And then the next video, I was going to start on the raspberry canes, but um, it looks like I'm going to have to put that off for another week because the garden's absolutely soaking. And there's no way I'm going to start, start trampling on all the beds it, um, the, the last thing you want, if, you, if your beds are wet, is to start trampling on them. And uh, it just compacts the soil and makes it a lot worse. So I'm going to leave that until the following video next week. And uh, we'll crack on these flowers um, and get these soon. So I'm going to finish off putting off these bellies daisies. Um, as I say, all of those are starting to come through. So within about a week to four days' time, I think I'll just end up taking these up the garden, putting them up on the benches, and then once they're big enough, I can put them off up there. Quite an easy, easy job to do. But for the time being, um, I'm going to clock on these pillars, daisies, and I'll, I'll see you up again in the plot soon. Okay? Bye for now. Right, well, good afternoon, everybody. We're back in the plot again. Uh, if you notice on the, on the far side, we have been busy putting the staging up. I've managed to bring four full trays of pillars, daisy up in there. Nicely on that big black tray now. And, uh, and of course, these are um, an extension and a half deep, no holes in, it's just like a, a proper gravel tray, 
and all I need to do with mine is uh, sit a goodly of newspaper on the bottom, and then the plant just sit in the newspaper. And of course, if you've got a, a well drained compost, as I always have, uh, it just acts like a sponge, and the, the plants can soak the water up easily. And uh, they'll stop in here now, right until next spring, the Bellis Daisy. I'll overwinter them in here because it's nice and cool. I say both the doors are open, they've got mesh in them, so it's it's uh, it's really cool in here. Uh, the cabbages have, uh, have romped away. Um, as I say, we've got them finished off uh, last week, but they're, they're flying away there now. They're just getting a little bit of the water every other day. Um, I'm going to give them a feeding, maybe it's next week, because uh, they've picked up now. There's a few little um, dead leaves lying on the bottom, but it, what I did do, I gave them a good spray with garlic spray, so I kept most of the bugs away, hopefully, and uh, they'll, just, they'll just fly away. But uh, yeah, I'm pleased I've gotten a lot of pot and I've finished at home. And, uh, and of course I need to turn my attention to the rest of the flowers for for next year. And of course that means the, uh, the spring bedding. Well next week what I'll do in the video, um, I'll have to start on the uh, on the baskets. And of course I've, I've been bringing plants in backwards and forwards. Uh, if you remember I planted the... Um, Planted the Canadian poppies, well that's them there now. They're well up, as they, as I say, you just got to go through the pots. And you, you will find the odd weed or two in amongst them, so just just pull the weeds out. But them, um, they're great. They're rumping away there now, and that's the uh, the Canadian poppy. They are sitting here all winter. As with the larkspur, the larkspur come through. They just need a good watering, and of course, your favourites. The winter pansy. Now they are marvellous there now. Now they are ready actually for, for putting off into the baskets. So what I'm going to do next week, I'm going to get into the big greenhouse, into the big tunnel, uh, make up another mix and we'll uh, we'll do a couple of baskets, a couple of spring baskets and of course it will be the pansies. Uh, polyanthus, so they are grown absolutely fantastic. After putting them up, they've only been potted up four weeks and absolutely marvellous, lovely, strong, but these have been sitting outside on the border. Uh, just a little protection over the heads, that's all, and uh, they're absolutely romping away, and of course that's all down to the compost. There's a little bit of feeding there, of, of our own compost out of the bins, or uh, multi-purpose compost, we a couple of handfuls of bone meal, and no, forget the shop sand, and it's a fantastic mixture, and that's the sort of plant you can expect from growing in a really good medium. Not over, not over feeding them, but they keep them nice and healthy, and of course all these I've had is just water. Nothing else. Haven't had a spray or anything. I might be tempted to spray them once I get the basket sorted out. Um, once again, it's the ivies. Now I normally take cuttings of ivy myself in the in the summer time, but uh, this year's just been one of them years when I haven't had time to do many as many things as what I like to do. So what I did do, I went into Shields. Um, if you remember on my Facebook page a couple weeks ago, I told you, and I got I bought four ivies from the florist, a pound each. And they're absolutely marvellous. So what I did, I split the pot, split the um, the pots up, and I got four good size ivies over each pot. So there they are. they've been sitting in here for the best part of three weeks now. Once again, I'm your own compost, and they they're romping away. Now they're going into the baskets. Two or three of them in the baskets. They're winter pansies, polyanthus, and of course I've got the old favourites to put in. The titli tea, which is a dwarf um, a dwarf daffodil. And uh, I've got some muscari, some blue muscari to put in, so the baskets are going to be absolutely fantastic. We'll do the baskets next week. I'll, I'll make another mix-up, exactly the same as what's in these pots. Uh, I'll make another mix-up and we'll get the baskets filled. But I'll do a video on that uh, coming next week. I'll do the, uh, the winter flowering baskets. And of course, I'm still on outside with them. Um, I've got the cabbages to sow. It's been absolutely horrendous up here the last couple of days. Rain, rain on, rain on. And of course, the ground soaking, and that's one one thing I never do is to go on ground that's really, really wet with rain. Uh, if they're soaked, I keep off it as much as I can. Even though me and Roger use walk boards, uh, long timbers to go up and down the rows, even standing on them, you can be compressing that soil right down, and it's uh, it's not good for the soil. So we tend just to keep off it. A couple of uh, a couple of nice days next week. It's absolutely beautiful up here now. Um, it was pouring down this morning through the night. But it's uh, the sun shining there now, it's absolutely gorgeous. But we're show us focus for the morrow, show us focus for Sunday. So as I say, I'm just going to leave it. The cabbages are fine where they are on the back border there. 
I've given them another spray when I sprayed these last week, and all I get is a good bit of watering, and they'll be fine for another week, and then I can get them planted out. Still plenty of time, and October's fine for me if I get my cabbages in. As long as they get a few nice days like this, and they, them roots will get well into the ground, they'll not be too big a plant, and they'll be well established before the, the onset of winter. What we don't want is a really big cabbage blown around in the wind and the gales snowing the wind. Just want a nice small cabbage with a good root system on and then you'll, you'll benefit from it next year. Believe you me, they'll just romp away. Um, same as these. Get no special treatment now. They've had their spraying. We'll give them a little bit of water, maybe just a little bit of um, nettle feed at the back end of this month and then that's it. We'll just leave them. It'll be weeded and watered only. And uh, hopefully next spring we'll get a first class cabbage out of them. But uh, that's the plans anyway. As I see, I'm starting to bring a lot of stuff inside now. Um, the only thing I've got to put in here is another row of um, Japanese onions. I'm going to put a row down the back here. And over the far side I'm going to save a, there's enough space down the back end there to get some early garlics in. Now what, when I finish planting these small garlic off into small pots, I'll leave them outside all the winter. And then I'll bring them in about February, March when they've had a really good frosting. And I'll plant some early garlics down that back end there, and hopefully I'll get a nice early garlic, and hopefully escape in the rust. That's what it's all about. You can try it, you know, try a few garlics inside, but don't forget, give them a frosting first. Um, one thing I will have to do this week is to take uh, the grandson's pumpkin up. Halloween next week, I think, or the week after. And of course, this was grown from seeds that are, are salvaged from his uh, pumpkin last year. So I'll return the favour. And of course I've got a couple of smaller ones here. I can always split up and get a few seeds out. So I'm sure I'm sure you'll enjoy putting a, a nice face on there. But uh, that's going down home with me. And you can, uh, the grandson can sort it out. So we've got the last one cone out. Out the top tunnel today. Roger, Roger had done that yesterday. And uh, we've had some uh, we've had some nice cone out of them. Can I complain? So that top end's empty now. So I'm going to put a few Japanese onions in there. And I'm going to leave a little bit of space up the top there for them garlics. Up down that back end there, they'll, they'll be fine. And of course next year, what will go in here after the cabbages is the tomatoes. So we must get this soil ready. Get it, prayed, um, get it well prepped for next year for the tomatoes. I'll do another reading in March. Or April once the cabbages start coming out. And then we'll, we'll get it bolted up ready for the tomatoes to go in. But uh, that's it for in here. I'm going to pop next door now and I've got a few dahlias to clean down. And uh, a couple of the croissants. I'll, uh, the croissants have done too well this year, but we've had a few blooms off them. Not too many, but uh, once again, I haven't had any time at all to spend on them this year. But they were put in the pots and they were thrown outside in the garden and left just to get on with it. And of course, if I had to spend a lot more time on them, I'm sure, I'm sure we would have had uh, some first class blooms that we normally have. But hey ho, that's, uh, it's another year. Uh, what I'm intending to do is cut some of them down. Yeah, by the weekend get them all cut down, and then we'll put them inside the the, uh, the greenhouses ready for taking cuttings from them from next year. But there, uh, that's in the uh, that's in a in a video to come. But there, uh, we'll pop next door anyway, and we'll uh, we'll have a look at these eight daily cuttings, these eight daily tubers. Okay. Right, well here we are in the Mullen house. Um, It's looking a bit tidier than what it was a couple of weeks ago. There's an absolute mess in here after some of the melons. The melons that are grown here, the, uh, the Malaga, they didn't grow as well. We've got a few melons off them, not too big, not as good as what the baby bush grew in the bottom tunnel. So what we're going to do next year, we're going to concentrate. We're going to grow the, the melons the same way as what we did last year with the Three Sisters, but it'll be in this top polytunnel this year because um, this, turn, this polytunnel will take the early titties and then once the early titties come out in the late May we'll, we'll replant it with their sweet corn peas and of course once again the sugar bush baby melon. But they are going here. They, they're quite nice. Uh, I'm really pleased with them. Now, uh, the area is what, what I did the other week. Four nights ago. I, I took four of my favourite ones up. Uh, these are the big giant ones, the big decorative ones, and of course what I like to do with my dahlias, and of course with them being inside of here, and that just goes to show you the heat that's been in here, um, it's a temperature there, God, it's 65 in here, and it's 5 o'clock in the evening, but it just goes to show you a little bit of sunshine can lift them temperatures, no problem, 
Um, what I did do with this, I cut them right back. And of course, once again, there's growth come from them already. Uh, young growth come from the tree was. So what I, what I like to do is to get them cut back as best I can. Um, where they've dried out. Sometimes if they're a big tube, I like to tip them upside down. So I'll just take the top off there. And then once again, just use an ordinary stick or a little dabbing tool or whatever you've got. And just take your time and just, because uh, they're nice and dry now, just give them a good, good poking. And uh, that way. Now here's a lot of surplus feeding roots on these. So once again, when I've cleaned them all off, what I'll do is I'll go around with the paste cells and I'll take all the smallest roots off because they don't need them. And the more roots on that you leave on, the more chance you have you've got diseases um, or rot fungus getting into the um, getting into the tubers before you put them up. Now what I like to do with mine, once again, I use a box like this, and all I do is I put a layer of composting soil in the bottom. Now once the tubers are all cleaned up to my satisfaction, um, I go on and check them, just make sure there's no rotten parts in them. Anywhere you see a bit of tuber that's, um, that looks a bit rotten, just cut it off. And then once again, what I like to do is to go around them with a yellow sulfur, with a puffer pack, and give them a good, give them a good um, dusting with that. And uh, as I say, all of the small fibrous roots, they can just be cut off. You don't need them. Take your time with it. It's an easy job to do. It's not hard. Um, as I say, all the, the really fine fibrous roots, you can take all them off because you don't need them. If they are damaged, like to the end of that tube, there is a little bit. Just knit them off until you get somewhere close to where you want to be. Any broken ends. Uh, as I say, underneath you've got a lot of little fibrous root, and I just let you cut that away. Not going to do them any harm. That's somewhere near the way I want it. And uh, it's been cut on by about a good half an hour. Once again, once you get the fibrous roots out of the way, you can go back in with your, your bit stick there, and just make sure you get them nice and clean. But what you can do is you can get a, a bucket of warm water. Some GS fluid or a little bit of bleach, and get them a good solution in that, clean them well off, and uh, just remember if you're going to wash them, don't forget to dry them back out again. But uh, these are look fine, these are looking fine. I'm not going to bother washing these ones, I've only got four of them. So, what I'll do with these, I'll get them a good clean off, a good dusting with the yellow sulfur, and they'll sit back in this box again. I'll take the rest of them out, that's another big one. That's Amy Cave, that's a big. It's a big purple pom pom. That's an absolute beauty. That I think I, I posted a couple of pics on my Facebook page uh, earlier on, which brings me to the, to the point. Um, there's a lot of people waiting for the videos to come out, but if you can't wait for the videos to come, well, get on my Facebook page. It's uh, Jeff Homer on the plot. Uh, send me a friend's request, and we'll uh, we'll sign you up, and we're we're on there most nights uh, on the plot. On as I say, the Facebook page. We've got, uh, got nearly a thousand members in there, so, you know, people from all over the country uh, posting up pics, asking questions, what's to be done this time of year, and we'd just like to keep you updated. But, um, as I say, that's my daily tubers done. Little piece there, a little bit brown in there. Nip it off. And just keep it nice and clean. And, uh, as I say, first class. Well, that'll just sit in that box here. Um, plenty of sharp sand in the mixture again on the bottom and then they'll just get a, a light coating of compost around the top of the chewer and they'll sit underneath under the bench here all winter and then I can bring them out probably about February end of January February in heat I can set them on a bit of heat and then of course you start getting your you start getting your cuttings away your, your cuttings from the dahlias I will be doing a few next year. I'll be taking some cuttings off them because these are the bigger ones, yeah, the big show ones. I like these, and uh, we'll get them cracked. As I say, we've got a, I've got a sunflower here still to do. Unfortunately, I lost one of the other ones. It was uh, I'm getting well soaked um, before I took it down. 
But this one, I've had it there in here for over a week now, and the seeds are lo lovely and dry, so that's a job I must start on Sunday before it gets any worse. I know there's a little bit of mould starting to appear on that one, so I want to get them seeds out and give them a good dusting with the yellow sulphur before they go any farther. So I'll crack on these dahlias, get these finished, and then the only job to do now is to, uh, is to crack on with the croissants. So we'll pop outside. Right, here we are. Well, we've got a couple of them. Uh, now this one, never full festival. It's usually, I've usually got massive blooms on these. But what I didn't do this year, I didn't disbud. When I put the croissant in a pot, so thrown out into the garden and just left to get on with it. So, and of course they just run away. Uh, there's some nice ones over there, some of the white ones. They haven't there. Uh, there's loads of buds on them, and uh, unfortunately they've just been left outside too long. They've had no attention paid to them, and of course this is what's happened. I've got a couple of pinks coming. I've had some nice white white blooms, and I've got some nice uh, say the Liverpool Festival. Um, but it's been one of them years. Next year I'll get a lot better. We'll get uh, we'll get stuck right into them, and uh, we'll get some nice cuttings off them. There's another one there, it's, uh, it's just coming into bloom, that's a pink, and I think that's Alison Pierce. It's, uh, but there's been nothing done with it, as you can see by the, uh, this, by the stems there, all the dead and dying leaves, which have been left to get on with. Uh, all I did, I stopped them, as I planted them up, I think it was about mid-April, mid you go back and check on one or two of my videos, um, you'll find that, I, I think I stopped them around about day April time. Uh, late April, beginning of early May, and of course, this is what's happened: is that they haven't been disputed. There's a two branch there where I stopped them. Usually I flow them two up, but uh, as they come to the top, the buds, I've left the side shoots on, and of course that's the um, that's the result of that. Now if I turn that round, you'll be able to see a bit better with that, that head there. And what should have been done a couple of weeks ago was they should have been snapped off. And that's all the little side buds there. Them should have been taken away, leaving one bud to flower on each stem. And of course, that's your bud there. I've just brought these inside, so we're still going to get some late blooms. Um, they'll not be as good as what they've been in, in years gone by. But as I say, it's all about time. If you've got the time, um, we have plants, get stuck into them, and they uh, just look after them. Now this pink here, I'm going to take that one down, that one's still in bloom there, now there's some over here that's been in absolute shambles, so what I'm intending to do with this, I'm not even going to bother letting it flower, I'll just have a look at the marker, and it's Dorich Crystal, now that is an absolute beautiful incurving, so what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to use this as my first one to, to close off ready for the winter. All I like to do is just uh, pull everything away. Now that side shoot here has already been snapped off with the winds. I'm just going to nip that off with the second ass. And of course that's what's left of it. It's been bent over with the wind and just been crushed. So all I'm going to do with that is I'm going to take it about six inches from the stool. That's from the base of the plant. Cut that right off Take out the stick, and there we have it. Just once a good clean up, all the rubbish taken off it, all the dead leaves pulling off the stem, a bit of side shoot there can be taken off. And there we have them. Now that will go into the greenhouse now, it will go into the, fo in the 100 foot greenhouse on a bench, and every other one that comes available. Um, there's quite a few of them down there, it's been, uh, been damaged with the winds. Take them all apart, and of course, I'll just leave a stoop now that it'll sit in these pots right until springtime. Because what I want to do is, I want to take a load of cuttings next year. There's a few people ask for cuttings, so what I'll do, I'll take a few cuttings next year, just let them grow on, and uh, hopefully, I'll be able to get a few cuttings down here. But this one's Durridge Crystal. There, yeah. I've got some Max Riley's, I've got some Liverpool Festivals, and I've got some uh, John Pierce. I think there's two or three different ones, different varieties. 
but there, as I say, I'll be treating them all exactly the same. I'll not take them out of the pots this year. What I like to do is to take them out of the pots completely, just get the roots a light shaking, and then repot them into some nice fresh compost. But I'm not going to do that this year, I'm going to leave them in their own pots, and all they'll get is a light spraying. Um, once I get them all down, as I say, they'll go on the benches, and they'll just get a light spraying, maybe it's a bit garlic spray, and just to check, make sure there's no pests or bugs in the top of the soil, no eggs, keep them, keep them nice and clean, and then we'll get some first class cuttings off them in the January. I might take a few down home, just one of each variety, and put it in the, in the warm greenhouse, because I will be putting my heat on at home in my little 6x6. Six six. I've got the, um, the sisters just brought us some onions back from Spain, so I'll be setting my onion seed off in January, and of course what I'll do is I'll, I'll put my croissants in the gentle heat, there's not much heat, I only have it at 50 in my greenhouse, never any more than that, and that's just enough to get them onions started off. Uh, I've got a leek head up there, I might take a, a few of the, the pips off the leek head and set them away, but there'll be no heat whatsoever up the allotment this year, um, it'll just be a completely cold greenhouse. But don't worry about that. If you've got if you've got a cold greenhouse, you'll be surprised at what you can grow. You know, if you just take a few easy extra precautions against frost and against cold and damp, <coughs> you'll be surprised how many plants you can start off in the March time. But uh, that's all for next year anyway. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'm going to do tonight, I'm going to work on my croissants, get a few more of these cleaned up and cut back. Hopefully get them put in the greenhouse. Give them a bit of spraying and they're ready, that's another job out of the way. And then we'll concentrate on what baskets next week. We've got the baskets to do, we've got, um, we've got the, the raspberries to pot up, uh, to, to tie up, uh, that's a job I must get done this weekend. We've still been busy working on our shed, I might show you a little bit of the shed next week. We'll be more or less finished the, the main framework of the sheds up. Um, our windows are in, we've got the rest of the roof to finish off and we've got the top tarp, tarp on and the canvas to put on the roof. Once that's done, I'll give you an idea of what it looks like, and uh, I'll be doing a lot of work in there next year in the shed. Um, as I see, I'll have benches not built in. I've got plenty of light in the windows, so we can, we can store stuff in there potatoes, onions, um, stuff like that. You know, it's plenty, nice and cool, nice and airy, and uh, that's the idea of having the new one built. But uh, for the time being, I'm going to knock off here. Um, well, I'm going to knock off filming because I want to try and get these croissants finished off the night and get myself away down home. And I'll get this uh, get this film online. So as I say, if you're um, if you can't wait for the videos, get one on my Facebook page. It's uh, Jeff Foreman on the plot, and uh, send me a request, and we'll we'll get you on the we'll get you on the plot, and uh, you can catch up more or less all through the week what we're up to. Um, as I say, we're up here every day of the week, me and Roger. Um, we're trying to get as much done as we can this month because once next month sets in, once November's here. Yeah, into the dark nights, so I'll not be coming up in the evening. There'll be, uh, be a lunch time where I come up, <coughs> and I'll spend a couple of hours in the afternoon before it gets dark, and then knocking off. As I say, it's not so bad at home because I can put my light on. I can go out in the greenhouse at 8 and 9 o'clock at night if I want. Put my light on, and I can work away quite easy, sowing seeds, or doing whatever. But up here in the garden, um, I have got light, but it means putting the jenny on, and once again, it's, uh, it's all cost. But, um, We'll see about that next year anyway, but uh, for the time being, as I say, I'm going to finish off these croissants, get them, get them cut back. Up, uh, as I say, I've had some nice blooms off them, a bit disappointing the size, but that's only down to my, it's my fault, because I, I never disbudded, I never fed them once this year. <coughs> as I say, all I did, all I got was a bit spraying when I stopped them, and, uh, and that was it. They'd been left outside just to get on with it, so, hence uh, the small blooms, but it's all better. For next year, we've still got the stock, we've got the stools, so we'll get some uh, first class cuttings next year, and uh, hopefully, I'll, I might build a frame for these inside next year, or I might put part of the tunnel to one side just to put a dozen croissants in and see how well they grow inside. I have grown them a couple of years ago inside uh, with the nets on, plenty of fresh air, and I've got some first class blooms. So, what I might do again next year, I might start off uh, just a half a dozen in the tunnel as long as I've got the nets up. Now, the nets are going to be up in this one. So I might just keep the part of this down the bottom here for six or eight croissants and uh, I can show you next year how good they grow. Just with a little bit of attention, which I haven't spent on this year. But uh, that's for another year anyway. I'm, uh, I'm pleased with them and the wife gets a few flowers anyway, so here ho.
Okay then, so I'm going to uh, knock off now. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope you're enjoying the plot. Thanks for sharing. And uh, don't forget to keep subscribing. And we'll be over the moon. So for the time being, we'll knock off. And we'll, uh, we'll see you all again soon in the plot. Okay?